It's quarter past four, and uh, I think we can start. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's uh, Alessandro. I'm Italian. Everybody calls me Alex. So if you want, you can call me Alex, uh, Alex as well. Um, I was born in Italy, but um, I've lived in the UK um, where I studied uh, linguistics, applied linguistics. Um, and uh, I got a degree there uh, in London. And when I came back um, from uh, London, I got a contract at one of those two universities you can see uh, behind me, at Tor Vergata. And um, since 2010, I've been teaching uh, medical English pronunciation to Italian students, basically. Um, but how did I get involved in this? Um, in 2007, I um, went to Feltrinelli and um, took up this book which I thought was a kind of uh, sort of an invention. Nobody had uh, talked about uh, um, medical English pronunciation before. And um, the book you can see up there is called Scientific English, and it was brought out by Danny Kelly in 2007. It is essentially a guide containing um, tips and resources for those Italians who want to know more about how to write scientific papers in English, etc. And it also deals with abstracts, um, journals, and keywords, and it also has some uh, um, tips about oral presentations. I was interested in the oral um, side of the book, um, so I took it up and opened it. Uh, the book claimed at the time to provide some guidelines on the pronunciation of technical terms. Uh, though the section devoted to the subject is reduced to a mere 10 lines. Uh, you can see it here. This is, the, um, this is page 153. You can't read it. I don't think it's very clear. I'll read you this part. Now this part, this is the only bit about English pronunciation in the whole of the book. And that uh, ten, those ten lines say, lo scopo del libro è di trasmettere un inglese standard corretto nel contesto e nelle situazioni relative all'ambito scientifico. Per questo motivo abbiamo rinunciato a dare indicazioni fonetiche, so they give up, <laughs> <laughs> e di variazioni di pronuncia, e abbiamo concentrato l'attenzione sulla forma scritta, anche perché, listen to this, se pronunciate male una parola inglese durante un discorso, il pubblico di madrelingua inglese sicuramente vi perdonerà. Now, when I read this, I was shocked. <laughs> it's not true, it's impossible. Nobody will accept this. No native speaker of English will accept this. And I've got proof. I've got the evidence. But before that, um, let's just carry on. Uh, they say, ci sono uh, due fenomeni relativi alla pronuncia che dovrete avere ben chiari. So if you want to be a doctor, you have to remember two things. Only two things are very important. <laughs> the rest is not important. La lettera Z viene pronunciata Z in American English and Z in British English. Extremely important if you want to be a doctor. <laughs> And quando riportate una serie di cifre in inglese britannico, lo zero viene pronunciato, etc., etc. So, if you want to be a doctor, you have to know, you need nothing, basically, <laughs> but you need to know how to say Z and how to say zero, or O. Now, um, when I read that, I was shocked, and you know that um, I have a blog, and on my blog, I wrote about this. I've got a, a phonetics blog, and I uh, write about uh, pronunci English pronunciation in general. Uh, and I thought that uh, this is just absurd. Uh, I've been teaching English phonetics to would-be doctors and nurses uh, for more than, well, 10 years now. And um, I know that pronunciation is extremely important, not only if you want to be a doctor or a nurse, but if you want to be a tour guide, uh, it is important too. Sorry. 
No problem. Hello. <laughs> uh, an excellent example which illustrates the fallacy of the author's argument and highlights the crucial role English pronunciation plays in the uh, science sector, but also in your sector, is provided by this guy. The guy you see up there is Professor John Wells. He is um, Professor of Emeritus Professor of English Phonetics. Sorry, Phonetics at the University at University College London. Uh, he was one of my uh, teachers, lecturers. He's published lots of books on English pronunciation. One book on intonation. Um, the book you can see up here is a dictionary. It's the most comprehensive dictionary on uh, English pronunciation. It's the same book, basically. Uh, the cover is older here, but it's the same book. And that is the book we will be using throughout the course. I'll explain how to use the uh, dictionary in a moment. Uh, it's not a general English dictionary. It's a dictionary about English pronunciation. So it only contains the pronunciations of words, basically. Uh, now, that guy, um, he's written lots of books. And in one of his books, sounds interesting, um, he um, describes um, a, uh, an anecdote. He has a house in Montserrat in the Caribbean. And he writes this. In uh, parts of Montserrat, the island in the Caribbean, are threatened by an active volcano. The Montserrat Volcano Observatory staff make regular reports on the current volcanic situation, both written and spoken, the latter on the local radio station ZJB. Not all the volcanologists and other experts are native speakers of English. One specialist whom I heard giving a spoken radio report recently is a Dr. D whose first language is Italian. Listening to him, I was struck by the fact that each time he used the word volcano, a frequent and crucial word in, in the, his report, as you might imagine, he pronounced it volcano. You would think that as a volcanologist working in an English-speaking environment, he would have noticed by now that all his English-speaking colleagues, not to mention all the other half billion uh, or whatever native English speakers in the world, pronounced volcano. He must have made a wrong inference many years ago about the pronunciation of this word on the basis of the spelling and somehow become deaf to all the spoken evidence around him showing that he was wrong. At some point, he says... Does this um, sort of thing matter? Well, yes, it does. The effect of his mispronunciation on me, at any rate, was to make me discount the, val discount the value of what he had to say. If he doesn't register the abundant evidence about the pronunciation of this everyday word, why should we suppose that he pays proper attention to the evidence on which he bases his scientific findings? If some kind person were to teach Dr. D the correct pronunciation of volcano, they would be doing him a positive and useful service that would enhance his scientific credibility and thus his professional standing. Now, um, Professor Wells um, also has also published another book. Sounds interesting, and this is sounds fascinating. That's the other book. Now, it sounds fascinating. He tells us something about tour guides. And this is probably more interesting. <laughs> it is connected to uh, basically what we've uh, discussed so far. Um, as I enjoyed a uh, shore uh, excursion while on a Mediterranean cruise, I wondered why the otherwise excellent Greek tour guide accompanying us from the port of Piraeus to the um, antiquities of Corinth and the Corinth Canal, did not know how to pronounce the words southern and country. 
Now, these are English words she constantly uses in her spoken commentary. But despite her admirable fluency in English, she's been misled by the spelling into thinking they're pronounced with ow. But native speakers don't say southern and country. We say southern and country. The pair south Southern has the same vowel alternation as profound profundity, though the spelling remains unchanged. And the vowel of country is different from that of count. Why didn't they teach our tour guide <laughs> this when she was at school or later at college when she was training to be a tour guide? Um, hello. I readily admit, dear tour guide, that all your English-speaking clients understand you with no difficulty and enjoy your informative comment comments. I agree that your fine command of English grammar and vocabulary far exceeds my own feeble efforts to speak your language. With only my basic modern Greek grammar and my seriously deficient vocabulary. But at least I can pronounce your language correctly. Uh, so this is just to say that native speakers do notice when you don't actually <laughs> pronounce things correctly because they do not follow you. Mm? Um, something connected with that is to be found in that book you can see up there. Now, that book is called English Phonetics and Pronunciation Practice, and it's, um, um, it was published in 2017. It's quite recent. And it's an excellent book. Uh, it's got lots of practice materials for practicing pronunciation and lots of recordings. I think they have um, more than 1,200 1, clips. So an awful lot of clips, audio clips available. Um, and at the beginning of the book, they say, even if people can understand what you're saying, an off-target pronunciation may still sound comical, irritating, or distracting to listeners. Uh, so, remember these three adjectives. Comical, irritating, or distracting. If listeners are distracted because of a false pronunciation, they may stop concentrating on what you're trying to say. Or, if they need to invest a lot of effort, in deciphering what you're saying, they may lose track of your message. Furthermore, judgments of your overall ability in English are likely to be based on the impression your pronunciation makes. If you sound like a beginner, you may be treated like a beginner, even if your level is advanced in terms of grammar, vocabulary, reading, and writing. Now, I think this is your take-home message. Uh, you, you might be as fluent as you like, but if your pronunciation is poor, you'll be judged uh, on that. Okay? Uh, and we know that English pronunciation is very difficult, and I'll explain why in a moment. You've uh, been given a um, um, photocopy with some recent changes to the um, English pronunciation um, that we will look into in a moment. <coughs> so, um, what is the best approach then? Hmm? You should aim for a, uh, for a pronunciation that can be understood without any difficulty. Nobody wants you to sound like native speakers, and this is not the aim of you know, the majority of my students. My students don't want um, to sound like native speakers, and I don't want them to sound like native speakers. I just want them to, to, to be understood without any difficulty. Mm? And you should use a pronunciation that does not irritate or distract listeners, basically. Eh? But, unfortunately, there's more to learning the pronunciation of a language than ma uh, mastering the vowels and consonants. Mm? When you think of um, pronunciation and when you think of phonetics, you probably think of consonants and vowels. Uh, there's more to that, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you should also pay attention to these seven points, which we'll go through um, together. 
Now, you should pay attention to weak forms. Now, in English, um, do you know what a weak form is? Have you ever heard of a weak form? Uh, if you look at the example there, hmm? uh, now, if you ask me how I say that sentence in a neutral uh, context, I would say, I took all of them. I took all of them. I would never say, I took all of them, which is probably what most Italians would say. Hmm? Um, weak forms, then, are basically uh, pronunciations that are used uh, while speaking, um, not when you're pronouncing words in isolation. So if we take the word them, for example, that word is pronounced them in isolation. If you ask somebody how to say that word, they'll say them. But once you use that word in a sentence, you're not likely to say them. You're likely, sorry, to hear them. Um, you're likely to hear something like them. <laughs> <laughs> and this pronunciation is recorded in dictionaries. Problem is, in Italy, we don't use pronunciation dictionaries. We're not taught English pronunciation, and so we don't know anything about that. And the uh, consequence is that when we uh, speak with native speakers, we don't understand them. Because if they say them, and we expect them to say them, we will never <laughs> understand what they say. Hmm? It is normal to say, I took all of them. It is not normal to say, I took all of them. It is possible, but it's a different context. If you say, I took all of them, you're highlighting them. If you don't want to highlight anything, then you say, I took all of them. Hmm? What did you eat? Well, I've eaten all of the um, sweets. I took all of them. Not, I took all of them. Okay. It's a different, different um, way of um, thinking about, describing something. And even of there. Of would be of is it? Uh, of is of, but uh, in a sentence, it is normally reduced to something like uh, of. In fact, when you think of, uh, do you want a cup of tea? A cup of tea, you don't normally say a cup of tea. You say a cup of tea. Okay, so that of is reduced to uh. That is a weak form. Uh, basically using another 